When there's only one spout to drink from and six brothers and sisters to share it with, you've got to push your way in and get your fair share. And while they're thinking water, we're thinking cute and cuddly. How can you resist those big eyes and tiny tongues? Is that better? Is that better? Problem is, there are many more cages like this one, filled with all kinds of furry friends, all looking for a home. He's an older boy, a little bit crotchety, but he's lovely. Like Harry, a 13-year-old terrier cross who turned up free on used Victoria. Harry was brought to the SBCA and adopted out, only to return a year later with a massive tumor and lots of fleas. <laughs> we got him all fixed up again. So hopefully he'll be going to his forever home this time, forever, who will take care of him for the rest of his life. But it wasn't cheap to take care of Harry, two to three thousand dollars just for his medical bills. Oh yes, a good boy. And it's stories like Harry's and funding for other animal cruelty cases that has the city of Victoria calling for change. The Victoria SBCA, like all branches across the province, rely almost exclusively on donations and fundraising. We hear it all the time, we pay for you in our taxes, and I'm like, no you don't. Like, it would be lovely if you paid for us in your taxes, but nobody, like, nobody pays for us. It's, it, it is just donation, fundraising, all that. Um, it's a public per perception because they think we're like an animal control facility and we're not, we're animal welfare. So the City of Victoria will be bringing forward a resolution at the Union of BC Municipalities in September calling on the province to increase funding to the SBCA so it can effectively prevent and respond to animal abuse. I understand that there's so many competing issues uh, that uh, funding often gets spread very thin. Uh, but I do think it's important. In 2010, the BC SBCA brought in about $26 million province-wide from things like donations, grants, fees and fines. But just $250,000 or less than 1% came from the province. Certainly the fact that we're out there, um, our, certainly our special constables are out there doing things with no government funding. I mean, it's like a police officer, but they're doing it for animals, but you know, we do it on donated dollars, so it's, it's really tough. And Stone says with just two special constables who investigate animal cruelty in Greater Victoria, a regular stream of funding from the government, or at very least a return of government gaming grants, would mean more animals could be protected. We could respond more quickly, we can go to more places, we can certainly, you know, be able to, you know, bring more, more um, cruelty charges up. We can, you know, certainly be able to take animals out of situations quicker. The province says earlier this year it increased the BCSPCA's cruelty investigation funding by $100,000 after more than 50 sled dogs were killed in Whistler. And it toughened up BC's animal cruelty laws to some of the toughest in the country. But some animal lovers feel more should be done. They need to look at what other provinces do, what the success rate uh, because of the extra funding, and they have to look at the groups that do the work and make that decision. So I think it's just important that we have that dialogue. The resolution calling for provincial SBCA funding is expected to be endorsed at the Union of BC Municipalities at the end of September. The hope for animal lovers is that the province will build on steps already taken earlier this year. In Victoria, I'm Nikki Ewanishan for The Daily.